Okay, uh, thank you and uh, good morning. Uh, this is my first presentation uh, um, here in the Linux Secure, Linux Secure Summit, so uh, a brief introduction. So my name is Claudio Siqueira de Carvalho, but in English uh, they call me Claudio Carvalho or Carvalho or maybe Claudio Cavallo, that in Portuguese Cavallo means horse. Uh, it's a little bit funny, but okay. <laughs> and uh, um, so TPM chip, I'm, the TPM chip is a crypto processor and uh, it provides uh, several capabilities and uh, if you go to the internet you can see some TPM use cases. Um, but today I want to talk about the, how we are, where we are using the TPM and VRAM to protect secure boot keys in open power. In Power9 open power systems, <clears throat> this, is, is the, this is the outline, so before uh, showing uh, how we protect the secure boot keys in open power, I want to give you a brief introduction on, on open power secure boot and also describe the problem and then show how we uh, protect the secure boot keys in open power. So the secure boot team, uh, open power secure boot team, uh, we have several contributors and contributors, and um, I work in the IBM LTC security team. Um, and uh, IBM Linux Technology Center, actually, and in the security team in the, in the LTC. Uh, and I, I'm a, a secure interested boot developer, and I have led um, the development team. Um, the secure interested boot development team uh, in the LTC security, but we also have contributors, uh, in other, other contributors in, in the LTC security and also in the Linux Technology Center, also IBM Power Firmware and IBM Research. So a disclaimer, so this work doesn't represent my view, uh, actually, it, it represents my view, not IBM's view. And all design points disclosed disclose here um, are uh, subject to, to finalization and upstream acceptance, and the features which I'm going to describe here, they may not ultimately exist or take a, the described form in, the, in a product. So I don't know uh, how familiar uh, you are with Secure Boot. So uh, Secure Boot, what is Secure Boot for? So Secure Boot aims to pre prevent untrusted code from loading during the platform boot, and for that it uses digital signatures uh, so that uh, only code uh, signed with trusted keys are started during the platform boot. Uh, but what is open power secure boot? First, I should say that open power is open source. Uh, open power firmware is open source. You can go to the, to the GitHub, uh, the open power um, organization in the GitHub, in, and there you can find the, the source code of all firmware uh, components that we uh, loads in the firmware stack. Uh, and we, you also find the OP build project that we use to build an open power um, uh, image that you can flash, you, you can clone that, that OP build repository and use it to, to, to build a, a, an image and a firmware image and also test the firmware image. The instructions is, is in the readme file. So open power secure boot, uh, it's divided in, into two domains. Uh, firmware secure boot uh, applies to all the firmware images we load um, up to the uh, boot loader. And OS secure boot applies to the, to, the Im to the OS kernel images. And that gives us some flexibility. Be uh, for example, we can enable firmware secure boot, but disable OS secure boot if you want. Um, and we can also sign the kernel with different keys. We don't need necessarily to sign the kernel with the same keys that we use to sign firmware. This is a Power9 boot flow. Um, it describes in a high level the boot flow in a Power9. But I think we don't have time to go through this, all these components here in this presentation. So if you're interested on this, to know more about the, the, boot, the Power 9 boot flow, you can go to the link I have down here, down there. Um, instead, I'm going to use this very simplified boot flow here. 
uh, to explain secure boot in power. So firmware secure boot. In firmware secure boot, the firmware images are signed uh, following the secure boot container layout. And uh, in manufacturing, um, we sign all the firmware images and store them in the processor NOR here. And the processor NOR, or PNOR for short, um, and we use these SB signing tools um, to build the, the firmware images and uh, actually to build the secure boot containers. And basically it gets the, 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 the image and it signs the image with up to three firmware keys and sign the public, the public firmware keys uh, with hardware keys and three hardware keys. Um, and um, also in, in manufacturing, uh, we, we store the hardware key hash because the hardware key hash, the hardware keys are the root of trust in the container. So uh, to make sure that only f um, trusted firmware uh, images are loaded during the boot, we calculate a SHA-512 SHA hash over the, hardware, the public hardware case and store it in a, in, a, in a protected memory so that at boot time we can just check if the only um, uh, trusted containers, secure boot containers, are loaded. Um, and uh, uh, the, in the container, all this data, um, the public case, the signature, and the hashes, they are all appended to the image. Uh, and that's wh what we call it as container. Uh, and the verification code is responsible, is used to verify the, the, the container, sec the secure boot container. And it is stored in, the, in a OTP ROM, which is a one-time programmable ROM. It's stored in a, in, a, in a protected memory as well. And the hierarchy hash, the verification code, and also part of the initial code that kick off the platform, they, they are, um, they, they are uh, part of our core root of trust, so they don't need to be verified. Uh, we trust them. Uh, and secure boot in fir the firmware secure boot can be enabled by a hardware setting, the motherboard, uh, which is platform dependent. Um, and so self boot engine, part of the self boot engine, we don't, as, I, as I mentioned, we don't need to verify it because it's, it's stored in a protected memory. But all the other images, subsequent images, host boot, OPPO, and OPPO here stands for open power abstraction layer. All the subsequent images need to be verified. The secure boot container needs to be verified uh, because they are all stored in the processor in And firmware secure boot is upstream. Uh, here I took a screenshot, uh, OPPO screenshot. So OPPO, this level. And as we can see, all the images loaded by OPPO at boot time uh, they are verified. And, but even if um, the verification failed, in this case, uh, the, plat the, the boot wouldn't be aborted because secure mode here is disabled. So if in any of these stages, host boot, OPPO, secure root, if any of these stages, if the verification fails in any of these stages, the, the boot is aborted and the image is not loaded. Uh, we also have the hardware key hash here in the device tree if you want to take a look at the hardware key hash, the trusted hardware key hash actually. OS secure boot. So the OS secure boot is, is, is a work in progress. We are still working on the design and also implementation. And the secure root is, is a secure boot container and when it's loaded, it's verified, uh, but as you can see, the secure root is a Linux kernel with embedded init RAMFS that runs Pettyboot, and Pettyboot is our bootloader. It's a k-exec bootloader. It uses k-exec to, to boot the OS kernel. And it reminds me of the, the panel discussion we had yesterday uh, where they discussed uh, Linux as a firmware. Uh, so in the current design, uh, the OS kernel 
the host OS kernel is signed with sign file, which is the same tool used to sign kernel modules, and the signature is embedded in the, in the file. And we are engaging with distros to, uh, to, sign, to provide signed kernel for us. Um, the OS kernel is verified uh, at the SKI root kernel space uh, at boot time. Oh, <laughs> verified at the SKI root kernel space by IMA appraisal. Uh, and we are adding support to signature, append, uh, uh, adding support to appended signatures to, uh, for, uh, to IMA appraisal. And we are also defining a a platform keyring where we are going to put our our keys so that I'm appraisal can verify the kernel. So we see in the current design, we want to reuse the kernel code that supports EFI as much as we can, and especially the EFI virus file system, because um, with the EFI virus file system, we can use uh, uh, user space tools such as the EFI var user space tools to manipulate the secure boot variables. Um, and in order to, to enable the EFI VARS file system, we, we don't use the EFI system tables. We only need to set uh, these runtime services here, the get, variable get next, variable set, variable query, query variable info. And we set them to, to call open runtime services that will provide access to the, to the key store stored in the, in the PNOR, in the processor NOR. This part is already prototyped. Um, it's still in the current design. Uh, we are in the process to request distros to build the FIVR package on PowerPC 64LE. And uh, we use the EFI, as I mentioned, you use the FIVR to manipulate secure boot variables, um, and in the secure boot variables, we store X509 certificates. And these are the, the, sec the secure boot variables we use, uh, the platform key, the key exchange key, and authorized signature database. So uh, the, the platform key, or PK for short, it's the root of trust for the OS secure boot. And when it's set, um, updates to any secure boot variable uh, requires authentication which means that if I want to update the platform key, the PK, um, the update, the PK update needs to be signed with the current PK. If I want to update the CAC variable, um, the CAC update needs to be signed by the current PK. And if I want to update the DB variable, um, the updates need to be signed by the one of the CAC entries, one of the CAC uh, keys. And if the PK is set, uh, it also requires um, authentication uh, when we try to load a, to boot a kernel or a kernel. And in, it means that only authorized OS kernels will be loaded, will be, will be booted. And in order to authorize a OS kernel to boot, we need to, to add the certificate uh, that we use to, to verify the, the kernel into this DB variable here. So, what are we trying to solve? Um, the firmware secure boot keys, the, the firmware secure boot key store, uh, we only need to, to store the hardware key hash. And it is stored in the CPROM, it's a protected memory. But for the OS Secure Boot Key Store, uh, we, in the OS Secure Boot Key Store, we have the PK, the CAC, and DB. And these secure boot variables, they are, we reserved a partition in the processor NOR uh, to store these variables. Uh, but the problem is uh, that the PNOR, the processor NOR, is unprotected by design. So attackers could just um, uh, have their malicious code executed. For example, uh, if you have um, uh, privilege in the OS, root privilege in the OS, or if you have privilege um, in the BMC or open, in the OpenBMC, which is our service processor, 
you could have access to the processor nor and change the key, the secure boot keys. So um, we remember that we, in the open power system systems, we have the trusted platform module, we have the TPM 2.0. And TPM 2.0 also provides non-volatile non -volatile memory. <coughs> and um, we could use that for store the secure boot keys to add protection, to protect the, the secure boot keys. But there is no space in the TPM NV to store, to store all the, t the, the secure boot keys, the secure boot variables. So we need to store only what we really need in the TPM and V. So let's see how we use the TPM and V RAM to protect the secure boot keys. Let's discuss this, these issues here that we are addressing, the integrity, how we authorize access to the TPM and V, and what variable should we store in the TPM and V, and how do we provide atomic variable update? So integrity. Um, the keys, uh, since the PNOR, the, the processor NOR is not protected, the keys could be modified without notice. And that's why we, we, we calculate a hash over the variables we store in the PNOR and with that hash, we can detect uh, integrity issues. It's also a five SHA-512 uh, SHA hash, and we store the hash and also the size in the TPM and V. And the keys would be consumed, the variables would be consumed, only if the, this integrity check pass, so only if the keys are valid. Okay, how do we authorize access to the TPMNV? Um, we store data in the TPMNV, so we need to control access to the, to the NV. There are a few options here. We could, for example, set a policy, uh, TPM policy, to access this, the, the data, the, the NV data. We could share secrets with user space because the, this data should be, uh, we should provide access to this data only for trusted entities. We could provide access to the user space, but we, we would need to, to share secrets, we would need to define a policy, and that, all that would uh, complicate the design a little bit. So instead, we just write lock the, the NV memory uh, at boot time until the next boot. And that also adds a restriction in the, in the design because the NV memory we allocate, it will be open uh, only at boot time, which means that if we have an update to the keys, to those variables, those updates should be processed only at boot time because that's the only time frame that we have the NV open. And that's why we, need, we also need to have an update queue. So if user space wants to manage the keys, all the updates should go first to the update queue, and then at boot and reboot the system, and at boot time, we, we process those updates. And um, the this, secure this root Linux kernel is responsible to process those updates at boot time, and so um, the, the secure root Linux kernel will process the, the updates, and when the, kern, the skewed kernel is done with those updates. It will uh, write lock the, the NV memory allocated until next boot. And what variable should we store in the, in the NV? <coughs> well, if the platform key is lost, we lose root of trust and OS secure boot would be broken because we, uh, authentication wouldn't be required to, uh, to, modify, to, mo to modify the keys, uh, nor to, um, to boot a OS kernel. And that's why we store the, our root of trust, our plat the platform key uh, in the TPMNV. What about the other, the other variables we have in the processor NOR? Well, the CAC and DB, we, we, we still start them, we continue to start them in the, in the 
process or not because we don't have space to store them in the TPMNV because TPMNV is small. It's less than 24K. Um, and uh, if, we, if uh, the, inter the integrity check fails on these variables here, uh, we will not use them, but uh, there is no, we don't need a special procedure to, to recover those variables. We can just submit new updates to those variables. Um, atomic uh, variable update. Well, now we have two storages. We have keys in the, in the processor NOR, so, and we also have keys in the TPM and V. And at the time that we are updating one of these, uh, especially the PNOR, sec the, the, PNOR, the processor NOR, the right operation can fail. We can have a, a power outage, we can have a uh, driver misfunction, and that would be a problem because the, the keys would be in a bad state if that happens. And that's why we, we use two banks uh, and, and uh, we use a one bit in the TPM and V to indicate which bank is, is the active, is the current active. And when we have updates uh, to, the, to the variables, um, we process those updates and apply the updates to the staging bank without touching the, the, the current active. And uh, when we finish to apply all the updates, we then flip the bit, this bank selector bit, to indicate that, okay, I'm done with all the writes, and now let's reboot the system and uh, use the new keys. Make sure that everybody, everybody will use the new keys. Um, okay, now we know what data we are storing uh, in the TPMNV. And um, how do we create, how do we allocate memory in the TPMNV? We use this NV define space command, but we don't uh, interact directly with the TPMNV, with the TPM actually, TPM chip. We use a TCG software stack, an implementation of the TCG software stack, and TCG stands for, trust for, stands for Trusted Computing Group. Uh, and this is a, this, this, this TSS is a IBM's TSS implementation. Um, so we need to use this NV define space um, to, to define an index. And we need to provide the handle of the index. Um, and also provide the attributes and the size for this NV index. Uh, as you can see here, at the, at the bottom, uh, we, we need more than 2K bytes. And there is a restriction in the TPM 2.0 uh, that the, the maximum size for a NV index is 2K, so that's why we need to create three index. So we have one index for the header, another index for the bank zero, another index for, for the bank one. But they all have the same attributes, but different sizes. Um, and they, all, they are all right locked at boot time until the next boot. So here, uh, we need to provide, to create this, to define these index, indices, we need to provide the, the TPM platform authorization and also uh, define this, um, uh, the, 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 the NV attributes. Define the NV attributes. And there is another command here, NV read public, where we can read the, the NV index attributes. And here it shows that it's six bytes, the size is six bytes. And the attributes are NVPP write, all these attributes here. And PP write and off write means that uh, the, the, if you provide the platform authorization or the index authorization, you should be able to, to update this, to write to these indices, to these indices here. And it, they are all ordinary indices, indices 
um, it, which means that we can store any data structure in those indexes. Write ST clear means that if write, if write lock is, is called, uh, the, the write lock bit will be cleared when the TPM is reset or restarted. And platform create means that only the platform authorization, uh, only if we provide the, plat the platform authorization, we can um, undefine these indices, this indices. Firmware secure boot, NV index, index. Well, I didn't mention that we, we, also, we are also storing uh, data for the firmware secure boot, but we are. Uh, so we, we define one index, and the, in, the, in, the, in this index, index, we store only the hardware key hash because we have two domains, and if the firmware secure boot domain, um, if the hardware key, if the hardware keys are changed in the firmware secure boot domain, that means we, we need to invalidate the root of trust of the OS secure boot, or in other words, invalidate the PK. And that's why we, we also need to store to have this uh, uh, firmware NV index. We have other commands here. So NV write, we can write to the index, and we need to provide the authorization. Here I'm using the, the platform, TPM platform authorization. And after, and I write in this first command, I write Linux Secured Summit to the to this index here, and then I read and set the output file to to the lss.txt, and after that, I just xdump the lss.txt just to make sure that I have the content that I just wrote. So we can write lock the NV index until the next boot, uh, until the next TPM reset or TPM restart. And after we write lock the index, we, if we write, try to write to the index, it will tell us that it's write locked. Uh, we can undefine an, an NV index, uh, and when it's undefined, to und in order to undefine any of the indi index indices we, we define, uh, you need to provide uh, the platform authorization, the TPM platform authorization, and once after you, you, define, you undefine the index, uh, if you try to read from that index, it, it no longer exists. There is also a command to set the platform authorization to a non-default. It's important because um, if you leave it with the default um, password, uh, an attacker could just undefine our index, even, even if we write lock the index. So, this is the uh, OS Secure Boot architecture with the, up, the TPM NV updates. Uh, OPAL is the open power abstraction layer, is responsible to define the, the, the NV indices and also um, and write lock the firmware index. And it also provides the OPAL runtime services that which in turn provide access to the key storage, the PNORSEC boot. And uh, there is the update queue in the PNORSEC boot, which is processed only at boot time by the SKU root Linux kernel. Um, the TPMNV itself, it, it, it can be accessed by OPPO, Linux, or any subsequent Linux kernels. And um, they are right locked. The Linux kernel will process the updates at boot time, and at that point, uh, the the OS NV index is right locked. And I had to implement. We had to implement a TSS um, in the OPO layer, um, and also TPM drivers to support, to interact with the TPM 2.0. So final considerations. Um, the TPM 2.0 uh, have shown a secure and available storage to protect secure boot keys. We don't need necessarily to, to store all the keys in the, the TPM NV. So I showed that we can store only the, some information, some data in the TPM NV and, and protect the keys. 
and it has several commands that you can use to interact with the TPM and V. So we can write lock, we can define, allocate memory, we can deallocate memory. And by using a TPM to provide secure boot, that adds a dependency on the TPM 2.0. So open power OS secure boot depends on TPM 2.0. And the TPM 2.0 is, is available in the, in the Power 9 systems, open Power 9 open power systems. Sharing the TSS code throughout the firmware stack is challenging because um, the firmware stack, each, each, each component in the firmware stack has different requirements and they don't need to have a full TSS implementation um, and we don't have um, trusted, uh, protected memory to store TSS implementation, so it's challenging. And verbose mode, um, well, the, the IBM TSS implementation, it provides verbose mode, you can just pass dash, dash V um, in the command, and that will show you all the, the, the steps um, that it goes to send the command to the, to the TPM chip. And I think that's very interesting. That helped me a lot because I could see what, what's the stream byte, uh, that what is the byte stream that was sent and received from the TPM. So it was good for me to validate the commands or the, the implementation uh, in the firmware stack. And here's some references. Uh, Open Power Foundation, you can find more information about Open Power Systems in the Open Power Foundation. And the firmware is open source, you can find the firmware in the GitHub. If you want to know more about Power9 boot flow, you can go to, the, to this other one link here. And in the following one, you have more information about Open Power Secure Boot, firmware Open Power Secure Boot, Trusted Platform Module, all these specifications are available in the TCG website. And uh, IBM's CSS implementation, it's open source, you can find it in this link here. And that's it, unless anybody have any questions. Uh, so am I right in, uh understanding that there is no rollback protection in this design? Or if it is, I missed it. Which is like? Uh, do you have rollback protection? No, we don't provide that. It's complicated to have, to have rollback. Initially we thought that we could have, but that's complicated. Thanks for a talk. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. So Secure Boot uh, helps to verify that our kernel, operating system kernel, is um, not compromised, right? And uh, can you, at the same time, use TPM for verifying that your firmware is not compromised? So, yeah, like, uh, like Boot Guard or something like that? Yeah, we provide this feature in the firmware secure boot here. So all the boxes in yellow is firmware, is the firmware stack. The secure boot is bootloader, and here's the host OS kernel. So we use, uh, we provide, we boot only um, 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 firmware images that are trusted in this case here. If they are uh, sign it with the, the keys we trust, which means the hardware keys. So they need to be signed with trusted keys, and the trusted and that hardware key hash, that hardware, those hardware keys, those keys need to be the trusted one, that the, the keys we trust. So that's how we provide a firmware secure boot. Does that answer your question? And does uh, this use TPM uh, for this key, for this uh, root of trust? where it is stored? Um, I'm not sure if I understand your question, but we use the TPM as a storage, and we also use the, the, all the, um, the capabilities that it, it provides to 
to to restrict access to the NV. Yes. So uh, you use TPM both for keys uh, for, for firmware verification and both for no. for uh, secure boot. No. In your end. We use the TPM only for for the OS. So only for store keys, keys uh, that we use to boot the OS. Uh, the other keys are stored in the container. So in the container, you find the public keys, the signature, in the, in the secure boot container, you find the, the, the public keys, the signature, everything that is required to verify that image. But okay, how do I, how do I know that that container is trusted? Well. I use this verification code here to do this to check if the container is valid, the format is valid, and also to verify each signature and the root of trust is the hardware keys. So I just calculate a hash of those hardware keys available in the container and compare with the hash that I have that I have here stored in the protected memory. If those two hashes match, that's okay. I can uh, trust that container. Thank you. Just two more questions. So maybe I misunderstood, but are you putting the PK as well as the hash of the PK in this NV index? No. Oh, okay. I'm trying to figure out how you're consuming so much space in there. No, no, we are not. We uh, let me go to that slide. We put only the we we calculate a hash over what we have in the, in the processor nor. And in the processor nor, we, know we, we don't have the PK. That was a... Uh, like, uh, yeah. Here, no, here. Uh, so this hash is calculated over CAC and DB right. only. Right, okay, but those aren't 2K in size. I'm trying, I mean, you're consuming a lot of NV space. Yes. I'm trying we, to figure out what I'm not quite understanding what's in there. A hash isn't that big. That, that's what I asked him. He yeah, said no. Yeah, the, the, the key, the P, so why are you putting the PK in the NV? Because we... Uh, the we, hash will protect it. You don't need the whole PK in there. Yeah, but if we, if we have a... With the hash, we can detect integrity issues. But you keep the PK outside. Yes. Verify it with what's in NV, and then you can use it. The problem is, if the integrity check fails on the variables I store in the processor, nor I can't use those variables anymore. And if the PK is there, well, my root of trust is compromised. I can't trust on any on on any any code that is loaded right. from that point on. So it's a it's not a it's a reliability issue you're concerned about, mm -hmm. not necessarily. Secure, but you have two banks. Yes, here. we have. Okay, all right. But if if the module fails, if the PK is wrong, and if or if the, the code is wrong and the PK doesn't verify it, you're still in a non-boot situation. If someone can attack the PK, they can attack the rest of the code, mm -hmm. and then that code won't verify, and you're in the same position as if the PK was messed with. So I'm still not seeing the benefit. Yeah. Yeah, in our case, PK is in the TPM and V. I'm trying to understand yeah. how could someone change the PK in the TPM and V if no. we right lock it. I think we're out of time. We can talk offline. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you, Monty. Yeah. Uh, so for the Linux boot work I described yesterday, we're using the Chrome verified boot model, which does do anti-rollback, and I'm just wondering if you looked at that at all, the Chromebook uh, use of TPM. Let me see if I understand. Can you repeat your question, please? So Chromebooks have used the TPM in mm -hmm. roughly a similar way, but they do implement anti-rollback mm -hmm. protection, and there are just, there are points of correspondence between what you're describing here and how Chromebooks work. I was just wondering if you looked at how the Chromebooks implemented the verified boot when you were doing this work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not aware of the Chrome OS implementation. Okay, I, I think it'd be pretty rewarding. Yeah. This is neat, but I think that that would, 
you know, help a little. And your your EFI services thing looked really neat. Was that a kernel module? The the thing that implemented EFI services and then used the Opal services? Yeah, that part is still uh, in progress. Um, we need to find a way that only that that part is loaded. That I think it's it's going to be a module, but okay, not a module, but Literally part of something the that we can disable using a kernel symbol. It is part of the Linux kernel, though. The, the yes, that's yes. neat. Okay, okay, thanks. That I, that was I was curious about that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. The the ski root is a fork of the vanilla kernel. Okay, so we're a little over time, so thank you. Follow up questions later. Thank you. Obrigado. <laughs>